Hello and welcome. This is Mrs. Zerpoli. I am here today to do a watercolor Wednesday. Uh, for my students who are in Fun Friday, I really miss you guys. I hope that you're taking care of yourselves during your time at home and uh, yeah, so we can just jump in and if you want to follow along and paint along, all you need today are red and blue and yellow paints. Um, I also pulled out a couple greens, but certainly not necessary since blue and yellow make green. So what I started here doing is just mixing all of the colors together because I'm looking for brown. And uh, to get that, you just start mixing. Um, brown is essentially dark orange. So some red and yellow and then a touch of blue will get it brown, but uh, it really is a balance because it's easy to go kind of gray or purple or really, really orange. So just take your time and uh, get to a nice kind of chocolatey color that you really like. So as I'm making this brown, I just want to talk to you about the tree that I'm going to be painting today. This tree is something that I just made a quick sketch of for the sake of this video, but I did also create a digital version that I uploaded to Google Drive. So the link for that will be in the comment or the, the description down below. You can either pull that up on your tablet or your computer and then just really carefully trace uh, the paper over the screen to get the same image or you can um, download it and print it out and uh, trace it or paint directly on it from there. Typically when I am painting something, I do use a pencil outline because I am pitiful at freehand just trying to like paint and essentially draw in my head at the same time. So I found that it's a lot easier if I have this outline. So once I start, I'm going to take a bunch of this brown paint and just load it up on my brush and paint on the right side of my tree only. And I'm painting on the right side because what I'm going to end up doing is a technique where it looks like the sun is hitting the tree from more of the left hand side of the paper. And so we're going to just load up the paint on the right and then I'm going to rinse the brush and bring just some clean water on the left side of the tree and bring that water all the way over to the paint, essentially letting it flow out. And so uh, if you don't have a ton of paint when you first lay it down, you can just go back in like I needed to and add some more paint to your right side. And the water is gonna draw that pigment across the trunk of the tree so that you get this really pretty kind of gradiated look. Once you have done the tree trunk, you can start doing the roots of the tree, which these are kind of like the, just the parts that you would see above the surface of the ground. So really like knobby and thick pieces of the wood of the tree. And I'm gonna stick to doing the right hand side of these roots and having that be the darker paint loaded side. And then I'm gonna put the, the wash of the water with no paint on the left hand side of each of these. And that will give that same gradation effect. And I just let the water go where it's gonna go. There's really no mistakes in this. So as I'm doing this, I have to keep kind of remixing my brown back together. The paints that I'm using, the pigments are kind of separating out, which is actually one of the reasons I really like it because then as this gradation effect happens, you get to see some of the, the blues and the greens and the yellows that kind of come through in that brown and it looks more natural and it's not all just flat one color brown. Um, and I'm also going through and as I'm washing the left sides of the different roots, I'm kind of blending it in with the base of the tree so there's not these like hard lines anywhere. So on this last root, I am actually gonna do, um, it's still the right hand side, but I'm making sure like it's the bottom of the root because if you were looking uh, at a tree in real life with the sun hitting it, that would be naturally kind of where the shadow is. So we're trying to follow kind of the laws of nature because it makes a little more aesthetically pleasing for the person who looks at the painting. At this point, I ran out of paint, brown paint to keep working with. So I had to mix up some more and if you are not using just regular already mixed paint, every time you mix it, it's going to be slightly different and that's okay. So my paint 
this time around I think is a little orangier but it does totally tone down and it ends up blending really nicely with the tree so don't worry if that happens to you too it is really not that big of a deal so when you finally get your color the way you want it which for me took a little while um, you can go ahead and any parts that have dried up and are not quite as dark as you would like go ahead and just kind of redo the same process so I went over the big part of the trunk of the tree because that's the most prominent part and I wanted it to be a lot uh, more dramatic looking and I just put another layer of my newly mixed brown and then just start washing with the the water and bringing that across the front of the tree trunk as much as possible and then also blending up into what's going to become the branches of the tree so again we have no hard lines like we were trying to do at the bottom of the tree so like before, we're going to be painting on the right hand side of these branches like we did on the rest of the tree thus far. And then we will do the wash. So for this part, I did switch to a smaller brush because it is a lot more detail and it's easier to really focus on stain as much inside the lines as possible. And this the only difference between the tree branches and what we've done so far is because the sun is essentially coming from or the light source is coming from the left hand side of the tree it's also coming from the top of the tree so we will get to a point where uh it really is changing you can't just have all of your dark spots on the right side because then it would look funny so other than that change, the rest of it, we're gonna just keep doing the way we've done the rest of the tree. So this is the last branch that I did with the dark part on the right hand side of the branch and really looking at it, uh, I could have swapped it, but it's not that big of a deal. It gives the viewer still the right look, right? So it's not distracting to the eye trying to figure out why it doesn't look realistic. So on the next branch, I'm going to use my dark paint on the left hand side of the branch and then do the blending and the water on the right hand side. So once you've completed all of your branches, it's time to just kind of go back through and adjust color as you see fit. So for me, overall, the tree is really light and I would like to darken it up a little bit. So I take a little bit of the paint and a little bit of the water and just start adding where it feels appropriate and blending as necessary so we don't get any real hard, funky lines. And especially on these branches, giving the right blending so that it looks like the branches are part of the tree and coming out of it and not just kind of stuck on top of the tree. This is also a really good time to go in and paint any branches that you forgot because uh, I got to, you know, 15 minutes of painting before realizing that that little guy was just sitting there all alone. This is where I check to see if you notice continuity errors. And now we are gonna start painting the leaves. So I have two different greens here. One is a little more yellow and one is a little more blue, but they're both very dark greens. And I am just going to start filling in the leaves. I'm using varying amounts of water so that as I paint them, I am able to make them look a little bit different. So uh, I made sure not to paint the leaves all immediately next to each other the same color but also not to go every other one because you don't want it to be a pattern because in nature we don't typically see patterns like that so again going for some realism and some believability with this one And 
And there you have it, our completed tree. It looks really great. And at this point, you're welcome to stop and sign your painting and have a completed painting. Or you can keep going and add a few more details that'll make it look even more beautiful. So I'm gonna start by adding some more leaves just in the background across different branches. And I've really watered down this paint so it gives the illusion that the leaves are a lot farther away giving uh, the sense that the tree has a lot more going on behind what we can just see from this angle. Now, like I did with the leaves, I'm gonna go in and add some branches behind really, really lightly to show that there's more depth happening behind the tree than we can see. This is gonna give an effect that the tree also has a more round, full shape. So the next step is adding in a ground for the tree to live in. So I'm mixing up some of the brown and some of the dark green and I'm going to just add in a horizon line to start. And then I'm gonna start working around the roots of the tree and just filling in this whole bottom section of the paper. And I did use a larger brush for this point just because uh, there's a lot of area to cover and we wanna do it quicker rather than slower. You could also definitely add the background at the beginning when you have just your outline of your tree. I, however, really like to put my backgrounds in afterwards. Um, people who go to art school might tell you that it's the incorrect way to do it. But for me, I like that if the roots of my tree had gone over my original pencil lines or once I'm going in and adding those branches at the end, I don't have to worry about it messing up any background that I've already laid down. And I know that I'm going to get to it at the end of my painting. So once I finished putting in all the brown, I actually went back in with just some dark green to try and give a little more texture and variation and to also just kind of set apart the ground and the color of the tree itself. So now I am going to mix up some of the pure blue with some water to get just like a nice sky blue wash that I can put on the background of the tree. And then I just start painting it on. It's going to be the color I use for the rest of the white spaces on this page. And there you have it, the completed tree. I hope you enjoyed following along this tutorial and I hope you'll join me next Wednesday for the next Watercolor Wednesday. You can also find me on Instagram at Tori Makes Art for more paintings and ideas. Have a good one.